Hey, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Just uh, gonna do another Tales from the Kitchen video. Uh, this one's talking about uh, the second chef I ever actually worked with, an Italian guy. His name was Pierangelo. And uh, this guy was, uh, he was an interesting character. I easily do two videos on him. I just pulled out a couple ideas, made a little list of just a few of the memories and funny things that I kind of remember him saying and doing. Uh, but yeah, he was basically this cranky old man that uh, I worked with, but uh, he he was interesting. He was almost like a human cartoon. Just this a little bit. I got a cat here distracting me too, so. But uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I say he's a cranky old man, but he was actually the same age I am now when I met him. But he was like like an old guy, I guess you could say. I don't know. He wasn't, he was definitely not young. I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I can't think of another way to put it. But, yeah, he was cranky, uh, bitchy, and also a character, and he's a guy you either loved him or you hate him. I loved the guy in a lot of ways, because he was just funny. And, uh, hold on a second. What are you doing, monkey? You're gonna knock things over. Here, hold on. Let me save the camera. Get the kitty. Okay, here. So, are you gonna sit, my, sit here like this while I do the video? So, anyway... <clears throat> yeah, and, and the guy had more hair than anyone I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, he had, it would grow this long, and it would st still be sticking straight out, like some kind of, like, punk guy from, from, uh, from my youth. Uh, he's gonna jump back up on the table. But, uh, anyway, uh, just a couple things, uh, a couple notes I jotted down, uh, to mention. I can put on these dad glasses instead of my good ones, because they're the closest ones to me. But, uh, yeah, he's just interesting. Uh, one of the first stories I have, don't you go on there. No, get down, you dope. Uh, he just wants to, you know, I love him, but he just kind of wants to get into everything and knock everything over. But uh, don't you dare. Hold on. Okay, ta-da, I'm back, and I have a cat now. I don't know, I went to put him somewhere down, put him over there somewhere, and he just clung on to me. There, go there. Yeah, go say hi to Yoda. Probably gonna knock him over too, aren't you? So, but yeah, one of the first things I wasn't there for this, but um, he bought the restaurant off of uh, his first restaurant. He owned when I knew since I'd known him, he'd owned three restaurants. I worked at all three of them. The last one I worked at, he wasn't uh, the owner anymore. He was bought out by his partner. And the second one, he was. Uh, near the end of that one he was not the owner there anymore he sold to the douchebag partner and I did videos about uh about uh, one of them anyway which was uh the Chris and Teresa video one of the last more recent uh ones I did which I think I did about probably a, more than a month ago now it was a while ago I did I, I don't do a lot of these kitchen ones just because of time but uh hi but anyway yeah so you bought this restaurant and uh Oh, it was, yeah, and I did one about Rudy. That was the very first one I did. Don't eat that plant. Stop. <laughs> Dopey. Yeah, go in there. Eat food. Food is in there. So, yeah, and I did a video. I, it was uh, it was like, all of you are big stupids. That's what the clickbait. So look for that one and, and look at the worst biggest douchebag owners or whatever it's called that I've ever worked for restaurant owners I've ever known and that's those uh those people but anyway so behind the stove now I'm still new to the industry I didn't know too much about cleaning stuff I was never told by him to go behind the stoves and clean all the grease so apparently there was about that much grease behind the stove so a good centimeter you know almost an inch of uh grossness behind the stove so or I guess a centimeter an inch I think a centimeter is about a third of an inch. So a third of an inch of stuff just behind the stove. And when the fire, if the fire inspector had come in, they would not have uh, let him open the restaurant in the condition it was. So he told Rudy, that was the, the original owner, that uh, if he doesn't clean it, he's going to, uh, he's going to sue him for not having the restaurant compatible or something. So now I wish I'd been there to see it because I worked for a year with this clown, Rudy, and he was an asshole. And uh, like I said, I did a whole video on him. You can check it out. Um, so apparently they're yelling, screaming at Rudy's yelling in German. Pierangelo's yelling in Italian. 
they don't know what each other's saying, but Rudy's down there on his hands and knees scrubbing it and with the scraper and just being his pretty much being his bitch, which I thought was the funniest thing in the world because Rudy treated his staff like trash and uh, it was funny to see someone else do the same thing to him, except I wasn't there, I heard about it. But I wish I could have been there. I would have loved to have seen that. So anyway, just a funny little story because the guy the guy didn't have a filter either. Uh, another story is, uh, let me see what I just, not sure what order I'm going to put this in. Uh, well, he did say a lot of funny things. He did have a lot of catchphrases. One of them was just regular shit like, uh, you know, oh, you're a gentleman and a scholar. He used to say that all the time. Um, and he swore a lot. I learned a lot of Italian swear words for him, like, Porco Dio, Putana Madonna. Sorry if I offend anybody, but these are just things. I'm just quoting him. But, and it, look those up. If you can understand or check, use the closed captioning and then and then Google the translation because Europeans, I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah, it was weird. I was just kind of stretching my arms. But anyway, yeah, it's uh, swearing loses... Uh, it loses in translation because things you would say in English that you would say in another language wouldn't make any sense. And a lot of European cursing, if you say it in English, it just sounds weird. But um, that was uh, another thing I uh, thought. But any anyway, moving on. He had, uh, and I got some funny stories coming up too. These are just general things. But uh, <clears throat> he, uh, there was this guy named Dave that worked there. Now Dave apparently used to do a lot of speed when he was younger. Dave, I was... 20 at the time, Dave was 40, and he's one of these older guys that had to walk around talk about how tough they were. He was a skinny fucking guy. He wasn't anything tough. He kind of looked like Frank Oz, if Frank La Frank Oz lost a fight. If you know what Frank Oz looked like, he looks like, you know, he had porn stash, bald head, hair around here, and glasses, but he, this guy, Dave, he wore, he had big, I, I don't know, they look like freaky pedophile glasses. I don't know what else to call them, and he wore them down like this all the time. He's always and he did a ton of drugs when he was younger, and the guy couldn't keep his tongue in his mouth. It was the creepiest thing. He'd be talking to him, and he would just be going, like, constantly. And he'd be, imagine, like, as I'm talking to you, and then as I take a breath, and then I just keep talking, and then... And you look at him, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Put that thing in your face, man. Like, you know, and he would... We'd all go to the bar after work, right? And he'd be trying to talk talk to um, girls my age, and they're all creeped out. Number one, he was funny looking, <laughs> like he, he was. I think he and and not to insult, I'm not making light of this, but I think he probably passed away because this comes this segues into another Pierangelo story. But uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, um, so he he would he could do the robot, the actual robot dance, and he could do it pretty amazingly i'll give him that but then he would ask girls to dance and they'd be like eh, and this is out in the country this small town called oxbridge and it was uh now it's more almost suburban in in its in its like downtown area but it's still a small town but then it was like a really small town it was a farmer town like a farm town it was tiny and uh he'd be invite people to dance and they would dance with him just because it was funny because he'd be dancing kind of normal you know, and then out of the blue, he'd just start going, you know, but doing it properly. I can't do it, but he was able to do it. And then as he's doing his thing, they would turn around and walk away and, and he would just keep doing it and then realize he's by himself and everyone's just staring at him. And, and this would happen so often and he didn't catch on that people were actually doing it because it was funny. And it, it was funny, you know. And another time with... with this, this guy in Pierangelo, now this is sort of a side story, but just talking about this guy, Dave. Um, Pierangelo had his, and his wife and daughter, they went away for, for a couple weeks, I think to Costa Rica or something like that. I know he had, had like a villa that he owned down there. And um, <clears throat> so they come back and his daughter, her name was Tatiana, she, she was just like a baby at the time. And so... <laughs> They come home, or they come into the restaurant, and she she hadn't seen him in a while. She hadn't been there in a while, and I guess they, she hadn't really seen Dave that much anyway. So now keep in mind, this is one, and I I, don't, I know it sounds mean, but he was he was ugly, and creepy looking. He did some fucking creepy shit. So anyway, so he, Pierangelo brings the daughter over, like stand in the kitchen, and Dave walks over, and he's just he's just like 
with his glasses down like this. Oh, hi, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> and from her perspective, she, <laughs> she's this baby, and he's like, like, like this close to her face. So this is pretty probably what she's seeing. Hi. Yeah, sorry, that was kind of gross, but that's probably what she was seeing. And right away, she grabs Pierangelo like this and starts bawling her eyes out. And, and she's, she's like, no, 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 take him, make him go, make him go. So, and he just goes, I guess she hasn't seen me in a while. And, and I look at Pierangelo, he looks at me, and he's laughing because he knows. Like, she's freaking out because he's ugly and scary looking to her. And he thinks that she's freaking out because she, she, doesn't, she doesn't remember him. But it was, uh, it was really funny. I remember that very specifically. Sorry, I'm not actually picking my nose. I'm itchy. But so there was, another, there was another time we went out with Dave. And then we left early. He stayed there with someone else. And apparently he had a heart attack. Now, mind you, he wasn't a healthy guy. He ate shit. He was a skinny little rail of a man who did tons of drugs. So we find out the next day that he had a heart attack. He didn't die, you know, but he, we find out the next day. He comes back, all right, come back to the restaurant. We find out that this happened. And Pierangelo, with all his love and compassion, he says to me, what did you do to the fucker? You think about dancing, he has a fuck. That, that's not really his accent. I can't do his accent, but you take, you take him out, my boy. You take him out dancing. And then you give the fucking guy a heart attack, and then he and then he starts laughing, like because <laughs> he just he didn't like Dave, and it wasn't really funny. He had a heart attack, but just just at the time, and just Pier Angelo's reaction was kind of kind of funny in hindsight. And then he ended up actually firing Dave, and it was kind of Dave's fault, but because of me. Now we used to have a prep area in the basement, and Dave was making the tomato sauce. Now when you make the tomato sauce. You know, they're the big cans like this, and we do six cans at a time. And you open it up, and when you dump it in, it was like a big giant um, uh, grinder. That, you know, the kind of ones you'd see people making sausages and things like that with. It was like a big thing like that. So what you would do, you had a pan on top, and then it goes down a pipe, and it comes out the side, and then the side, and then into a bucket, or whatever, whatever it's ending up in. So what you do is you have to put your hand on top of the tomatoes, and then slowly do it and let the juice run out and then let the tomatoes go and then run it down the thing and use the plunger and push it all in and let it come out the thing. So if you don't do that, you get tomatoes all over the fucking place. So Dave's not doing that. He's just taking it, taking the lid off and just dumping it. And it's, and it's everywhere. And I said, I said to him, I go, and I was pissed off. Sorry, I was pissed off because I knew I was going to be the fuck, the, the chump who's going to have to clean up, clean it up. So... I said to him, I go, Dave, man, you got to put your hand on it. Look at the master. He goes, don't tell me how to cook. I don't know. Don't tell me how to cook. I know what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know. So I go up and I tell Pierangelo, do you ever show Dave how to do tomato sauce? I've told him lots of times. Why? I'm like, well, somebody better show him again because he's got tomatoes all over the freaking room. And we had our freezers in there. It was on the freezers. It was just, it was everywhere. And he looks at me and goes, I don't fucking believe it. So we go downstairs, and I stop him. I go, okay, whatever you say to him, don't tell him I said anything. Just just call him out on it or whatever. And he's like, my boy, don't worry. I'm not going to tell. So I go outside, and I can hear through the brick wall outside the restaurant. Well, as I'm walking out, I hear, I don't believe it. <laughs> That's what he says to him. Dave, are you stupid? And he's like, yeah, Piero, I'm stupid. He's just... And he goes, are you stupid? Are you fucking stupid? He goes, yeah, Piero, I'm stupid. I can see that you're stupid. <laughs> That's how he said it. And then I go, as, as I'm going outside the back, and I can literally, literally hear Pierangelo screaming at him through the wall. Fucking shit, how many times? Blah, blah, blah. And a minute later, Dave comes out. Well, this is it. I got fired. Yeah, well, nice working with you. And actually, I never saw him again after that, that I can remember. But yeah, that's how he got, Dave got fired. But I know it sounds like it's a Dave story, which it could have been. But no, it's I'm still moving more into the Pierangelo stuff again. We're at 14 minutes, almost 15 minutes. So I'm going to go through this quick. But I do have a couple funny stories. Plenty more stories. Uh, 
There was uh, one time, now I, this is when I first started there. I'd only been working there for about a week. I didn't really know Pure Angelo all that well. And, uh, excuse me. I didn't know him all that well. <clears throat> and apparently he had a hemorrhoid operation. Now, this could be embarrassing to Piero, but he's never going to see this video and he could very likely be dead because even though he it was 30 years ago, he'd be about 80 now, but he was also like a chain smoker. He didn't drink alcohol. He just smoked a bit of weed. Uh, what the fuck's weed? So... He would, but he would drink espresso, like, like just boom, 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 one right after the other. So there's a good chance he might not be with us anymore, which is kind of unfortunate because he was a character. But anyway, so he had this hemorrhoid operation. So I didn't know about it. I'm just in the kitchen doing my thing. And I was only the dishwasher slash salad guy at the time. And I can hear him on the phone talking to his wife. And all I hear is he's getting angrier. And I just hear because I had to go to the bathroom. By the time I got downstairs, it was too late. I already went. And then there's this pause. And all I hear is, Just bring me some fucking underwear! And he slams the phone down. And he, I don't think he knew I was there. But he turns and looks at me and goes, What? <laughs> and he leaves the kitchen. And as soon as he left, I'm... <sighs> like, I, it was the funniest thing I had ever heard. Just the whole breakdown of it but apparently he had an operation and uh he couldn't keep it in so there i and there's uh, some empathy there but it's still pretty funny and uh he would also say a few other things one thing he said to me that was funny we were outside this is at the second restaurant and he goes i don't need friends the only friends i need are friends that make me money and then he bangs on the wall we we're on the patio and he bangs on the outside of the wall of the restaurant goes this restaurant is my friend. <laughs> it was just some random shit he would say. Everything was, you're a gentleman and a scholar. I already said that though. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, another thing he'd always say, even if you're on the phone, he's trying to tell you something, he would always say, okay, my boy, look at me, look at me. I remember I said to him one day, how can I look at you? I'm on the phone. And then he's, you know what I mean. But uh, I got one other funny story here that I'll get to. I that I want to make sure I, f I fit this story in. But uh, one time he, he had it, they had it in their head to have the staff party before work. It was a Christmas party. Why, why? I don't understand. So they're just, him, him, he's just feeding us shots. Drink, drink, here's a shot, here's a shot, here's a shot. And the other, the other owner was kind of doing the same thing. And uh, so I get completely shit-faced. And then, oh, it's 6 o'clock, time to open up. So I'm just like, eh, washing dishes, making some salads and a few of the appetizers that I knew how to make. <clears throat> and I ended up, I'd never drink, I don't like coffee and I'd never drank cappuccino before. So I asked the bartender, his name was Ryan, and I said, can you make me a cappuccino? Oh yeah, no problem. And I just downed it, just thinking it would help. I think in an hour, I drank like five. I was just, and then that night I couldn't, I was like this, but I was all hungover feeling, but my body was all like this. It was a terrible feeling, but, uh. Anyway, yeah, there's that. Uh, I got the mic story. That's not important. Uh, I guess I'll just go with the funniest one I can think of was uh, this was at the second restaurant, and often he would uh, work at the first restaurant and go back. Sorry, he'd work at the second restaurant. Sometimes he'd be at the first one or something. Like that. I can't remember. But one of the partners he had at the second restaurant temporarily had, didn't have a license for a little while, lost his license for a short time, and... Um, so what he would do is he would drive to the second restaurant and he would drive him home. And sometimes, not always. So this one time, he's at the first restaurant and his wife's friend was at the bar, sitting at the bar drinking. And he was getting kind of drunk and Barangelo lived closer to the second re first restaurant, which was out in Uxbridge. The second restaurant was in Markham, which is another it's a small city in, in uh, near close to Toronto. So he would come, he came to Markham, picked up, his partner, the other partner, and drove him home and told the guy at the restaurant, you know what, you stay here, you've had a lot to drink, I'll come back and I'll drive you home on my way home. So, about an hour, I guess, goes by, he would come back, he comes back and the guy's not there. So he's, okay, I guess he left. Then he goes to the bar and he looks and every bit of alcohol is gone. The beer is gone, the wine is gone, all the bars all the bars, uh, all the booze on the shelf 
is gone. Everything, all the expensive cognacs that were way up on the top shelf, everything gone. Now this is winter time too. So he's like, what the fuck, I guess. You know, he's probably freaking out, calls the police, finds out where this guy lives through, through his wife who, was, who knew the guy. And they end up going to the guy's house. The guy gets arrested and, has, and gets charged, has to pay for all the booze, of course, stuff that got wrecked and replace it all because it was winter. Some of the bottles had fallen over and broke and some of them, the, the lids, the cognac ones, which are just cork lids, opened up and leaked out. And these were like six, $700, $800 bottles of cognac. This was, this was the good stuff, not the cheap, cheaper stuff that, that were cheaper, but it was the expensive stuff. So this guy really owed them a lot of fucking money. So he ended up getting charged later on. But the next day he comes to the, to, to the restaurant. I was working at the second restaurant and he's, uh, I didn't know what happened. All I know is he's sitting in one, one room, one section of the dining room and his wife's sitting over in the other section of the dining room. Now their daughter was a little bit older at this time, the same daughter that was freaking out over Dave's ugly face. So she would go to him and he'd be like, tell your mother she's stupid. And she'd run over to her and tell your father he's an idiot. And it was going back and forth. And he was blaming her, like like his wife, because it was one of her friends. And she was blaming him for, because it was his fault. <laughs> it was a dumb thing to do. I mean, he didn't, it wasn't his fault in the sense that he, he didn't know the guy was going to be a thief and steal all the shit. And, uh, but still, like, he should have drove the guy home first and then dealt with then dealt with his partner and then other things. Now here's going back to the same thing. The guy's excuse for taking it was, he goes, I didn't want to leave the restaurant unlocked with all this booze just sitting here. Forget about thousands of dollars of, of food that, that was just around the corner in the walk-in fridge. You know, he, we'll just take all this alcohol. And he was worried somebody was going to come in and steal it all and put it all in and take it all with him. If he didn't take it, put it in his truck and take it home where it would be safe. That was his excuse, and obviously that's bullshit, but I don't know what made him think he would actually get away with it. But uh, <laughs> just a funny story, and I, you know, the fact that that, uh, <laughs> that happened is still hilarious to this day to me. And uh, I guess that's probably all I'm going to say in this story, because there's a couple other things, but I don't have enough time, and they're really not too interesting. Maybe I'll do a second story, because I know there's other ones about them that... Uh, I didn't put on the list. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, which I always say at the end because I'm a freaking idiot and forget to say it in the fucking beginning. Sorry about the swearing. But uh, uh, yeah, I would really like that. Bump me up to try just trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. I'm just uh, about 265-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood right now, which I'm really, really happy about. And uh, just a tiny little milestone in my life just to get to a thousand would really make me happy. And uh, I guess that's it. And uh, I can have a few more of these stories coming up soon and uh i guess until the next one bye